Are we good? All right, Drew, we're good. Hey, how you doing? I can see you. We're back on, huh? Yeah, we're back on. Yeah, sorry about that. A little little technical glitch, but uh, we fixed it. I mean, I expect more from you. I know. I expect more from uh, this platform service. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We, well, hey, at least we got it right. We got you know we got your big head on here, you know, front and center in the screen, you know. So at least we got that covered. I'm, I, I'm headlining this show, buddy. I'm telling you. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, so uh, ho hopefully our connection's okay because I didn't want to disrupt your sleep this morning, you know. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, you shouldn't. You shouldn't because check this out. This book that we're going to talk about today, <laughs> yeah. Why We Sleep, right? It's all about you know. I need to live longer, live better. Well, that just means better. that means you need to go to sleep earlier. Yeah. What time do you crash out? You know. Uh, I'm a, I'm asleep before 9.30. I'm asleep before 9.30, but a lot of times I'm getting in bed like 8 or 8.30, especially now that the sun's going down a little sooner. In, in, the, yeah. in the summer, it's a little tricky, um, yeah. but it's also tr tricky trying to reprogram you know my family to help support that because I feel like a, you know, a bum trying to go to bed early, but... Yeah. Do you think I could reprogram these goons around here? <laughs> no way, bro. Let me think about sleeping in a 7x10 you know, with another guy. You know what I mean? It's like, hey, bud, you want to turn in earlier tonight? <laughs> Camming me along the store, you know. Make you really well, outlive our sentences. We can get good sleep tonight. You know? Um, yep. But I've been watching this book all over the place. People are starting to, it's starting to really bug some <laughs> especially my celly. He's like over my sleep lectures. But um, <laughs> I'm telling you, I got to keep throwing this guy's book up here. Matthew Walker, man, um, he's on to something here. And you know what's funny? Very early on, I'm, I'm talking 22 years back in my sentence, I was aware on a subconscious level of how my lack of quality sleep was impacting my life. Yeah. You know, but we in America, we override that. And what it is, I just started drinking coffee because I never drank coffee until I came to prison. Yep. Because I was a kid, you know. But, um, but yeah, so I'm ready to talk about a little bit of my sleep trauma, um, how I feel like it's impacting this country, and then also my sleep goals going forward. But I also came up with a triune concept about. You know, how do I go to sleep good every night in this type of environment? Why is that important and how do I do that? So, no, that's anyways, a... I'll shoot to you. Go ahead and talk about whatever you think. Yeah, you know, uh, I thought this book was pretty awesome. You know, I had, yeah. uh, you know, my mom's, um, you know, passing anniversary was two years from yesterday. And, yeah. um, you know, she suffered uh, from you know, multiple sclerosis yeah. and then also ALS. And then you got to wonder, yeah. hey, did she have that because she was, you know, cutting out on sleep, you know, in her life? Yeah. And, um, you know, did that contribute to, you know, those diseases? And, you know, so her body was not able to repair itself because she was a driver. I mean, she was a great mom, you know, became a certified public accountant, driving, you know, driver, driver, driver. I inherited that, those driver genes. And so, yeah. you know, so as I, so I, as we prepared for today, I, you know, I thought about my mom, but I also thought back on the retirement physical that I had from the army. And when I walked in to talk to the doctor before I stepped out of the army and he said, Hey, guess what? The whole army is has a sleep deprivation culture and most likely you are sleep deprived and you are operating at a lower level of performance you know than you realize and it's because the culture is all about deadlines you know health and fitness be damned and um you know we drinking coffee in the morning to get yourself going you know maybe have a beer or a glass of wine in the you know in the late afternoon you know because you know what that you know what that does that alcohol it, it gives you more energy and, you know, and, and I'm trying to cut that back and I can feel it in the late afternoon, especially if I worked out in the day and had a good day at work, you're zonked, you know, you're like ready to go to bed, you know, and it's only like, you know, 536. Um, and so, yeah, I know. 
you know, but the other thing, the army would always pride itself on uh, driving through sleep for the mission, right? Because, hey, if you're going to beat the enemy, you got to do anything and everything to get the advantage. So we would do night operations. You know, we would, you know, do 24-7 operations because you want to have an offensive uh, cycle of uh, offensive operations so that you always have the initiative and you're pushing the enemy to defeat. And, you know, that requires you to be to be able to operate, you know, without sleep and to push yourself. And. Now, so you need that in mil- the military, right? But if you can build an army that ge- that gets good sleep and do the twenty four seven ops, you know, then that's just even a higher, you know, bigger leg up, right? So um, it's it, anyway. So those are, those are my initial thoughts going into this. I have a triune as well, but I'll, I'll let you share yours first. I just want to share those two perspectives. Well, I mean, oh, geez, I could really relate to that. You know, I, I'll go back to when I was first arrested and I was in solitary confinement and the light is on 24-7. And I was in there for several months and I was 20 years old and I had really never realized, I was I had dealt with sleep deprivation as a result of drugs and alcohol and living a reckless lifestyle. But now that was paused, but now i have been unable to go to sleep with the amount of stress that I was dealing with. Um, And then also the light being on 24-7, they've actually begun reducing that throughout the country in intensive maximum units, uh, what we call the whole or say, um, because it's it's like um, psychologically damaging. Yeah. How is it psychologically damaging? Well, you don't sleep. And when you don't sleep, you begin to act more irrational. I remember when I was in the hole in Walla Walla 20 plus years ago, and it was like being in a mental hospital. You know, I mean, granted people are acting out for a lot of negative cultural reasons, but really underlying all that is that no one was sleeping. Yeah. And what was also prevalent in the system at that time was people were getting on sleeping medication, uh, sleeping pills, anything to try to counterbalance that. Yeah. Um, not to mention coffee, you know what I mean? Trying to get your day going. But what I'm saying is I recognize a mental deterioration in myself and everyone else in the prison system when we couldn't sleep. And here's the crazy thing Uh, on a societal point of view, right? We come in here on a punitive basis, right? Number one, this is punishment, right? But the second key goal is rehabilitation. Yep. And I think that this science that Matthew Walker is talking about and why we sleep is so key because if you want a person that can think rationally, that can express empathy, um, can, can communicate, rationalize their emotions, you want a better rested and a well-slept in it. Yeah. And so I just recognize in my own life going way back, oh my God, bro, I went through periods of having stress in here, the different type of people or groups of people in here. Um, and I, I remember waking up feeling like I aged, like I felt like I just aged five years in a matter of week, a one week, one week in, in, in with less sleep. Um, I had significantly aged. I had no proof. Yeah. You, know, you look in that mirror and you're like, Oh my God, something happened to me. And as I started reading this book in particular, chapter eight, um, I'll tell you this, I'll read this. I'll share this really quick. Uh, as your sleep-deprived heart beats faster, the volumetric rate of blood pumped through your vasculature increases, and with that comes the hypertensive state of your blood pressure. Occurring at the same time as a chronic increase in a stress hormone called cortisol, which is triggered by the overreactive sympathetic nervous system. And it's crazy when you can feel this happen in your body, but you don't have the scientific reasoning like this guy's laying out here yeah no that that, that's awesome and so you know what i would like to add on top of that is uh i think one of those laws out there and me you know maybe over time you and i need to capture some of these like laws or principles that we think the the world and the humanity needs to really uh consider and capture but i think the law of compounding interest right you know this this applies to sleep Right. Because, you know, if you if you if you're right here and you keep on getting fantastic sleep, 
then you're recovering from your workout. You're learning more from your reading, you know, and then you, you keep on, you're going up, you're, you're like increasing. But if you, you know, if you have one of those bad weeks that the, like you talked about, or if I'm working too hard at Honeywell and I'm neglecting my sleep and eating and, and you know, then I'm actually degrading some. And so, you know, how many days can you keep where you're, you know, doing plus one, plus one, you know, like your, your small increments of sleep, you know, exercise, um, eating well, and then that then just keeps on compounding and then it takes off like a, you know, compounding interest. And so yeah. I, I think that's a, that's something hard to maintain, but that's where you got to be consistent and pers- you got to be disciplined, number one, but then consistent and persistent on trying to get after the fundamentals. So, all right, I shared one of my triunes, but I think it has to be a fundamental yeah. to, to well, energy. So, you, know, you know, one thing, do you remember how he said your, your, your short-term memory? I remember when I was going to college in here and I'm stressed out trying to give a term or a final exam and I'm going to sleep really, really late, giving up really, really early. And I've been at this place where I'm reading a paragraph in a book and I don't retain, I don't even know what I read in the paragraph before it. I'm stuck reading the same paragraph over and over. I'm getting it. Yeah. You know, and um, <coughs> he, he said that's one thing because your hippocampus is your short term memory. What I like is that he talked about at night these sleep spindles. So you have five to seven sleep cycles in a night, 90 minute sleep cycles. And during that, you go through non REM, which is your deep sleep slow brain waves and then your REM sleep which is when you're dreaming but your your brain is bathing in uh, electricity just recovering itself at slow non-REM slow brain waves you have sleep spindles and he said that they track these that every 100 to 200 milliseconds they were seeing an electrical wave go from the hippocampus to the cortex which is your long-term memory yeah and it's so key to be able to learn is that every night when you sleep, that you're basically emptying out your short-term memory, getting into the long-term memory. So when I when I go went to work the next day, when I was studying to be a CNC machinist, or when I was programming CNC machines, or whatever, I remember being overloaded, like I'm not getting this. It's just not sticking, and because I wasn't sleeping good. Yeah. And it wasn't that I wasn't in front of information. Information was coming to me. But I was never asleep long enough, and I never had a quality of sleep to empty out my hippocampus. So um, that doesn't really tie into one of my three things. <laughs> I just to put that out there. <laughs> hey, well, uh, but you're, what you're highlighting is that you got to recover. It's just like working out. You know, your brain is a big yeah. old muscle that has to have time to, you know, to process, learn, and grow, you know, and uh, yeah. just like a muscle, you, you know. If you don't give it that time, you're going to overload it, and then it's just exhausted. So, Well, the chapter that I was just reading, literally before I came here, chapter A, which is cancer, heart attacks, and a shorter life, sleep deprivation in the body. And so that's just like, I'm going to read this chapter twice. <laughs> yeah. You know, because it's, well, <laughs> because I'm sleep deprived, I need to read it twice. <laughs> you know, um, because it's that important. Okay, so let me get to some of my triune concepts that I have here. Okay, how do I sleep well? Um, my first key is intentionality. You know, I want to be asleep by 10 o'clock at night. That doesn't mean I jump into bed at 10 o'clock at night, which means that by 9.30 at night, I need to be intentional. In America, we're really good at setting alarm clocks to be intentional about when we need to get up. We're intentional about when we need to go somewhere, be somewhere, or do something. But we're not intentional about when we shut ourselves down. I, I yeah. think you and I both have intentionality as the key, you know. And and it starts at seven o'clock at night for me. You know, I mean, because like you, I'm trying to I'm trying to make it to the weight room. I'm trying to work out, do some CrossFit, shower, eat, maybe make a quick phone call, wind down, and I, I got it to be by nine o'clock at night. I'm reading and shutting things down. But that leads to the second thing. Um. Forgiveness. That's that's a key necessary ingredient in my life. Um, I need to be letting little offenses go. I need to be seeking forgiveness for any offenses that I might have um, done to somebody. 
I need to be reconciled and making sure that I'm right with God, that I'm praying, that I'm in the Word. Um, I need to have a clean heart. So you can give me one of your points now. So I gave you um, intentionality, and I need to practice a life of forgiveness, giving it and receiving it. Yeah, that's pretty good. So I think the your intentionality lined up with, with a title that I had, like habit tips, right? You know, and I wrote down four of them that are the big ones for me and you know but maybe I, I like your title though of intentionality so i'm gonna i'm gonna absorb that but you know you need to have a routine schedule is that number one you know don't exercise too late so i you know last like wednesday night or thursday night i had like a really like emotionally you know tr you know charged uh, work day and i'm like i gotta go run i gotta i gotta burn off some energy so i went running at like 7 p.m at night that totally jacked up my night of sleep because then my heart was up my body temperature was up i couldn't fall asleep for anything so uh donut number two is don't exercise late you got to manage your you know your consumption you know you don't want to uh i don't smoke so that so i don't have to worry about nicotine but i can't you know, do caffeine in the afternoon because then it'll mess me up. And and you can't eat too late either because then if you eat too late or have that little dessert late, you know, ice cream, then your body is churning on, you know, trying to digest that and it keeps you up. So, and then the other yeah, people. Plus civilian life, don't eat ice cream today. <laughs> oh, man, you're really suffering, bro. Yeah, well, hey, hey, and then the last one is, you know, need to avo avoid alcohol, avoid uh blue light like from our tvs and ipads yeah, you know yeah, don't read from models. that and then too much excitement so so you know i i got this uh this ring it's called the aura ring and it has like uh circuits and measurement on it right and, and it's pretty cool because the charge on it will last like four days but it reads my sleep it gives yeah. me and it reads my it gives me three scores every day it gives me a readiness score which is just overall health because it measuring my heart rate and heart rate variability, it and it and it combines that. Then it has a sleep score and it has an activity score, and so all of those combine together. And so I've seen a huge mark because you know you know what gets measured gets managed. You know the old adage that we've been talking about. Yeah. Now I'm actually sleeping better because and I'm trying to you know spread out my activity in the day. Don't just like do one intense workout and then sit all day. Because it doesn't, you, then you're you're still not active. You got to stay active and walking and try to break up your workouts. Because having a full, yeah. active full day is much better for your overall health. They say sleeping is or uh, sitting is the new uh, uh, smoking. You know, because if you're sitting around too much, yeah. even if you work out, it's bad yeah. for you. So, yeah, when I was in industries, uh, sit stand desks were getting really popular. Yeah. You know? You know, a desk that pops up and you could stand at it and do your work, do your computer work. Yep. Yeah. Okay, so, so, so I agreed with your intentionality. I, 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 I jumped on that one, but, but I just, for, I reframed okay. it with more specifics. Okay. Yeah. So beyond forgiveness, you know, I need to be intentional when I want to go to sleep. I need to practice a heart of forgiveness, you know, going to bed, you know, and, and just to be honest, I need to be right with God in, yeah. in every area of my life. But I'm going to say another key aspect of being able to find rest and have rest not only just physically but for your soul is to have hope. You know, I used to have this picture on my wall in my cell. A friend of mine drew it for me. I, like, I had this idea I wanted to have a Christian coffee house, you know. Um, it was a on, the way, on the Way Cafe, you know. And a, a friend of mine, a great artist, he drew up this beautiful – cafe with like the space needle in the background anyways i just put it on my on my wall and i would lay there every single night when i wanted to go to sleep and i would look at it and you know whatever kind of drama and stress you know, there could be fights there could be you know, just a lot of noise and ruckus and hate and discontent going on in an environment like this i would lay down and look at that picture every single night and i would start telling myself okay what what type of hardwood floors you know, do I want, yeah. you know, what, what type of tables, you know, and it, it just gave me something positive to focus on. It gave me a hope. And I'm, and when I, when I go to sleep with a hopeful heart, you know, when I, when I go to sleep with a heart of gratitude, I sleep better. I think better. 
you know, and I just am better. I'm a better person <laughs> the next day. So bless you. Do you need to sleep? Get some sleep. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> hey, you know what? So, uh, that's pretty good. I, I like how um, you brought in almost like your your mindset and the importance of the mindset towards sleeping, right? Because, you know, when I have a bad night's sleep, you know, that one last week I had one day that was really bad because I, you know, I attributed it because of my late workout. But the reason why I went and ran is because I had an emotionally charged day at work, right? So yeah. my brain was probably still spinning on the on that drama. And I, w- and I wasn't letting loose of it. So I think that yeah. th- you're on to something about being able to forgive, release positive yeah. thoughts, move to the next, yeah. move to the next thing. Yeah. It's all, it's almost like, uh, you know, that, that's another aspect of like adaptability, right? Is to and be yeah, able. Not only that, I had it to where I was going to sleep angry. I was waking up and I was going to work and I was stressed, you know, yeah. Um, I was working in a very competitive environment. It's all guys, so it's all alpha testosterone. Yeah. A lot of slight, snarky comments, which could lead to, you know, even worse situations. And you're kind of battling that the whole time. You know, you you, you want to say things, but there could be a negative outlash. Um, and so, I mean, I remember going to sleep just really stressed waking up with stress and then going to a work environment with stress. And I recognized that I was killing myself. I was killing, I was killing my own sleep. I was, and I had to learn to let things go. And there were certain things and positions and machines that we were working on. And and, uh, I wanted to beat each other to the machine every single day. I'm I'm running this machine. And I I remember that I needed to, it's like that Brendan Burchard thing. The main thing is to keep the main thing the main thing. Yep. And I have to like a couple times I say, you know what, this doesn't matter. I'm, I'm going to take this out of my life. I don't care if I don't get it. I'm going to let other people win because really what I want in life is I want greater peace. I want greater joy. You know, I want great relationships. I want great friendships. Yep. And you have to learn how to, you have to decide what matters. And I think that goes back to what do we say? You know, what things mean. What was it? It was three things. What things mean, what to think about, and then what to do. Yep. Yeah, no. You know, you, so, I mean, that was a big thing for me. Decide what, what matters and what doesn't matter. Yeah, no, that's pretty good. So so my other two. So the first one was, uh, you know, it was like habit tips. But I, I like your word of intentionality, yeah. right? So be intentional about sleep and include all those yeah. habit tips in there, okay? Then the other one I would say that I like is uh, I call it – I think every day starts, you know, you start with like, it's almost like a bookshelf, right? You got an AM, you know, in the morning, uh, bookend, and then you got a PM bookend at the end of the day, right? Sometimes like in, in my work in corporate world and in, in your work in prison life, the only spaces you get to control are the bookends, right? Everything else is like a chaos in the middle, right? You can, you can shape, you can control how you react to things in the day. But sometimes you're going to get thrown curveballs that you, you know, and your, your day might start out with one schedule and it's going to end up with another. But, but you know, and, and we do a good job, you know, naturally as, you know, Americans and, you know, driven culture with the AM piece. What's neglected is the PM piece and, and yeah. then being deliberate there. And so if you can look at that PM bookend and if you do a good job getting to bed, you know, maybe actually preparing for the next day, you know, you know. For me, it's like setting up the coffee pot. You know, if I'm going to work, pack my lunch, yeah, you know, yeah, lay out right. my clothes, you know, pack my little briefcase, whatever. You know, if I can do that, then that sets up the next day and the next day is that much better, yeah. especially if I get to bed early yeah. and I get that good sleep, right? So yeah. so my next one would be, P, so in, I like yours, intentionality. Then I would say PM uh, bookend, if you could have that yeah. that focus, right? And then the other thing is, is it, you need to recognize that it's a fundamental to energy. And I think there's four yeah. things in uh, that make up the fundamentals for energy. You still there or did you drop? 